how an intra-aortic balloon pump works and the indications for its use. In this podcast, we will discuss in detail how an intra-aortic balloon pump works and the indications for its use. To begin, we will run through a brief revision of simple physiology, followed by the clarification of some important terminology before moving on to identifying the indications for the use of an intra-aortic balloon pump. Physiology of cardiac perfusion. In order to meet the metabolic demands of the body, oxygen supply must equal oxygen demand, and the same is true for the heart. Myocardial oxygen supply is dependent on a number of features, including the anatomy of the coronary arteries, the diastolic blood pressure, the time spent in diastole, and the oxygen extraction ratio. Unlike other tissues in the body, which are reliant on the systolic blood pressure for perfusion, Perfusion of the left ventricle is dependent on the diastolic pressure. The coronary arteries are embedded within the myocardium, and so during systole, contraction of the cardiac muscle causes constriction and a marked increase in coronary vascular resistance. This reduces coronary blood flow to negligible levels. The opposite is true during diastole, when the relaxation of the myocardium allows blood to flow unopposed through the coronary vasculature. Consequently, The longer the heart spends relaxed in diastole, diastolic time, the better the perfusion of the myocardium. As such, tachycardic patients have reduced myocardial perfusion. They also have a decreased ventricular filling time, and this reduces stroke volume and therefore cardiac output. The amount of oxygen required for the myocardium to function adequately, the myocardial oxygen demand, depends on how hard the heart is being forced to work. This is influenced by heart rate, preload, afterload, and contractility. The preload is a reflection of volume status and directly influences the left ventricular volume of blood and pressure of that blood at the end of diastole, i.e. the left ventricular end diastolic volume and the left ventricular end diastolic pressure. These two values are responsible for the amount of stretch placed on the myocardium and, according to Starling's law, the stroke volume. Preload can be estimated from the pulmonary artery diastolic pressure or pulmonary capillary wedge pressure and from other non-invasive techniques such as echocardiography. Afterload is the resistance against which the left ventricle must pump in order to overcome the resistance of the aortic valve and eject blood into the systemic circulation. It is influenced by systemic vascular resistance, that is, by the degree of peripheral vasoconstriction or vasodilatation. Contractility, or inotropy, is the force with which the myocardium contracts for any given preload conditions. It is increased by sympathetic stimulation, either via endogenous or exogenous catecholamines, and is decreased by ischemia, acidosis, and some negatively inotropic drugs. Considering these basic physiological points, we can begin to understand how the intra-aortic balloon pump works and some of the indications for its use. Mechanism of action of the intra-aortic balloon pump. The primary goal of an intra-aortic balloon pump is to restore and maintain a balance between the two factors previously discussed, myocardial oxygen supply and myocardial oxygen demand. Myocardial oxygen supply is enhanced by inflating the intra-aortic balloon pump during diastole. During this time, the left ventricle is relaxed and oxygenated blood flows through the coronary arteries. The vascular system is a closed system with a fixed volume of blood. Therefore, inflation of the balloon causes displacement of blood back towards the coronary arteries, increasing aortic diastolic pressure and therefore myocardial oxygen supply. This is known as diastolic augmentation. The balloon remains inflated during diastole. Correctly timed deflation occurs at systolic pre-ejection, reducing aortic end diastolic pressure, aortic resistance, and hence afterload, making it easier for the heart to empty. The reduction in aortic end diastolic pressure in turn reduces left ventricular wall tension and thus left ventricular workload, and this reduces the metabolic demand placed on the heart. 
This sequence demonstrates the rapidity with which the end diastolic pressure improves after commencement of the intraaortic balloon pump. These effects combined lead to improved cardiac output through increased stroke volume, decreased heart rate, and increased mean arterial pressure. As well as the primary effects listed above, there are systemic effects as organ perfusion pressures are increased by intraaortic balloon counterpulsation. Urine output increases due to the improved renal perfusion. Improvement in cerebral perfusion pressure may enhance the patient's level of consciousness. Peripheral and organ perfusion increases, and respiratory status may also improve. In the healthy individual, homeostasis is maintained in the face of changing myocardial oxygen demand by autoregulation of the coronary arteries. However, in those patients in whom the coronary vessels are occluded by more than 70%, this ability is lost and blood flow in the narrowed arteries is diminished. Where coronary blood flow is reduced acutely, as in a myocardial infarction, the ischemic cardiac muscle becomes compromised and requires emergency reperfusion by either thrombolytic therapy or mechanical means with percutaneous coronary intervention or bypass graft surgery. Following an acute myocardial infarction, there is always damage to the myocardium and a risk of complications, including ventricular arrhythmias and mechanical complications such as papillary muscle rupture, and these may lead to left ventricular failure and cardiogenic shock. There is a low blood pressure despite fluid administration, reduced cardiac output with tissue hypoperfusion and compromise, elevated filling pressures, and peripheral vasoconstriction. In this situation, a vicious cycle may ensue where treatment strategies actually worsen hemodynamic compromise. Fluid administration in the face of poor pump function and left ventricular failure leads to pulmonary edema and worsening hypoxia. Vasopressors and inotropes increase heart rate, peripheral vasoconstriction and contractility, increasing myocardial work and oxygen demand. And vasodilators may reduce afterload, but impair coronary perfusion as diastolic blood pressure falls. Clearly, this is a catch-22, and when the appropriate balance between oxygen supply and demand cannot be met using medications alone, an intraaortic balloon pump may be used as a temporary measure to improve hemodynamic status and blood supply to the myocardium. Early establishment of the counterpulsation is necessary, as it serves as a cardiac assist device and can only support already existing cardiac function. Refractory ventricular failure may develop during acute myocardial infarction, secondary to mechanical complications such as ventricular septal defect or acute mitral regurgitation, or secondary to causes other than acute MI. For example, sepsis from any cause, viral myocarditis, blunt cardiac injury or contusion, or cardiomyopathy. An intraaortic balloon pump may be used temporarily alongside standard supportive therapies to augment cardiac function and maintain vital organ perfusion whilst pump function recovers or until definitive surgical treatment is provided. The intraaortic balloon pump has also been used during cardiac surgery, both when there is difficulty weaning a patient from cardiopulmonary bypass and electively prior to surgery for patients who are high risk. For example, those with severe proximal coronary vessel disease, severe left ventricular dysfunction, congestive heart failure, recent myocardial infarction, or cardiomyopathy. There has been some evidence to suggest that its use decreases both ICU and hospital stay due to the need for lower inotrope dosing and improved cardiac performance. The use of intraaortic balloon counterpulsation may also be employed in high-risk patients with impaired cardiac function who are undergoing non-cardiac surgery in order to offset the increased myocardial oxygen demand that anesthetic agents and surgical procedures place on an already impaired heart. Summary. In summary, the aim of an intraaortic balloon pump is to maintain a balance between oxygen supply and oxygen demand in the failing heart. This is achieved by correctly timing the inflation and deflation of the balloon. Inflation during diastole causes diastolic augmentation and improves coronary perfusion. This enhances myocardial oxygen supply. 
deflation, occurring in early systole, reduces afterload and serves to decrease myocardial oxygen demand. These combined effects lead to an increase in cardiac output with improvement in vital organ perfusion pressures. Although the intraaortic balloon pump may be used in several situations, it must be remembered that its purpose is only to support left ventricular function temporarily until such time as definitive treatment is provided or the patient's intrinsic cardiac function returns.